Photographers see things differently. Ants Aladdin's once said, you don't take a photograph, you make it. And that's one of my favourite quotes because it's so true. There's opportunity around us all the time, but it's the creatives that sort of pick it out and find it. What is going to be the difference to make you be just a person that takes pictures and a photographer? And that's down to how you start to see the world. When you hear people talk about photography, they generally say something like, oh, you've got to have an eye for it. When I first started out, I was wondering, did I have an eye for it? Was I going to be any good at this? And then what starts to happen, of course, is as you learn more about your subject, just like any craft, you can explore more and it means that you can start to look at things differently. Once you've learned about aperture and how to isolate a subject, that's going to change everything for you. The things that you just walked past before, you're now going to start to look at in more detail because you know how to isolate that subject. You know how to do something creative with it. That's what starts to make you a photographer. That's the difference. You'll probably be used to just pointing your camera at something and not really thinking too much about it. The more you can think outside the box, did you stand up a bit higher? Did you get down a bit lower? Change your viewpoint, change your perspective. That's when you can tell your pictures will start to improve because you're starting to see things differently to what everybody else is gonna point their camera at. So my advice would be to start to think about composition first. The rest will come. You'll very often hear composition described by rules, but for me, I prefer to call them guidelines. You're the artist, and so how you create your photographs is completely up to you. But when you're first starting out, you may find some of these guides helpful when looking through your viewfinder. First of all, let's begin with the most basic rule, removing all the distracting elements. When you look at the scene in front of you, decide what is your main focal point? Where do you want your viewer to look? From there, when looking through the viewfinder, look at what is distracting within the scene. Is it people? Is there something in the foreground which is messy or distracting? What happens if you take a few steps to the left or further forward? Does the shot improve? By having a little patience or waiting for that group of people to move, you can drastically improve your shots. Don't be afraid to feel the frame. You can zoom or get closer and eliminate anything that just doesn't really add anything to your image. Make sure the focal point is right where you want it to be so it commands all of your viewers' attention. Now thirds is one of the most common rules you will hear when referring to composition. The way to simplify this is if you were to imagine a viewfinder with a grid of two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. Generally speaking, we find images more pleasing to the eye when we place subjects where the vertical and horizontal axis meet. This also applies to either just the vertical or just the horizontal lines. If you're shooting a landscape, you may wish for the emphasis to be more about the foreground, so you would place your sky on the top third of the grid. In another scenario, the sky could be the main focus, so we place the horizon on the bottom third instead. Our instinct when starting out is to place our subject right in the centre of our frame, which may be absolutely perfect. But after you've taken that shot, see how it looks if you move to the left or to the right and place your subject on one of those thirds and just see which you prefer. Leading lines are pretty self-explanatory. Is there something within the frame that can lead your viewer into the scene? It could be a road, a fence or a pathway. The destination could be the main focal point or a pathway could just lead us into the scene and out the other side of the frame again. Sometimes we may wish to change our perspective to make a subject appear more dramatic. If so, get up close and look up. You can really create a sense of scale for your viewer just by taking a shot from a different and more unusual viewpoint.
Now that you know the rules, it's important to remember that rules were also made to be broken. Use them simply as guidelines and experiment to find your own style. Some of the strongest and most iconic images ever made broke all of the rules, so don't get too hung up on the details. Just shoot what feels right for you. There will be a series of little markers within your viewfinder, and these represent points where your camera can focus. Once you know how to change them, you can move the marker around these points until it lines up with where you want your camera to focus. You may find these focus points extremely useful when working with large apertures. I love to take people's portraits. After 10 years of doing this, I have photographed all kinds of people, from two days old to people in their late 90s. But that turns me into the most ridiculous people watcher. I don't even realise I'm doing it. I've been sitting there and just watching people pass by and often I'll say to someone that I'm with or I might just keep the thought to myself, I really want to photograph that person. I was walking around the village one day and I spotted Malcolm. This guy has got so much character, so much personality. It was one of those moments where I just went, I have to photograph him. My first memories of fishing when uh, my uncle Bill Barbary, who was a beach sailor, picked me up in his boat when I was about four or five year old, took me out in the boat, and we caught a mackerel, and it lay on the deck. And in the sun, it was just glistening, all the rainbow colours on its white belly, and its green and black flashes on the back. It, it just turned me on to fishing for the rest of my life. He's got so much about him. He's always got a story to tell. He's just a real character and he just entertained me the whole time. Well, really there isn't the worst part for me, it's just all brilliant, but I mean I suppose if I had to say something it would be the weather conditions, because either it's too rough or too hot, it's never perfect, but to me it's just the fact of catching fish is just brilliant, it's just the fun of it, the, it doesn't matter if you're in a net or on a fishing rod or in a crab pot. When you see the fish coming over the side of the boat, it's just an excitement. And even at my age, it's still exciting as it was when I first started. What I really like to do is bring out the character. I want to know the person. I like to spend time with the subjects first. I like to know about them. Who are they? What's their story? For me, I like to document that. Just before the market shut at Christmas, we always used to go to this place called the Caterns, these rocks. In fact, our nickname for it was Jurassic Park. And we saved it all year for Christmas. And when we went in there with the trawls, the fish was absolutely massive. This is why we called it Jurassic Park. They were place the size of halibut, there were Dover soles, turbots, brills, red mullet, the most incredible fishing you could ever see. And this was one we always save for Christmas because the Christmas markets were the best money and the best quality fish. And it was always made our Christmas bonus, basically. We buy our presents. <laughs> Once you've got a rapport with somebody and you're comfortable with them, they give you so much more. They look at you differently. And then you can really get in there. You can look at their face without making them feel uncomfortable, figure out the better angle for them, whatever it is. But you start to find the important part for you. It might be their eyes. It might be their weathered skin. Whatever it is, you make a decision on what you want to focus on and what you're going to bring out. Get that character out that person. I love to photograph everybody because I think you can make everybody look beautiful or everybody look dramatic or interesting or something. You know, there's not a single person out there that isn't photogenic. Very often I like to take portraits with incredibly low depth of field which can be risky because if I do not get my subject's eye in perfect focus my shot will be ruined. I line up my frame to create my desired composition. I move my focus point until it's directly over my subject. Then, 
I take my shot. If I'd have left my camera to select where it thinks I should focus, it may have chosen the background or the water in this image and totally ruined my shot. I would recommend trying to get into the habit of returning your focus point to the centre once you're done. If you come across a fantastic photo opportunity and you left that focus point to the right or the left, your camera is going to focus on the wrong thing and you'll miss the shot. I really wanted to think, right, okay, I need to do this guy justice. I need to photograph him in this environment and to make him look as authentic as possible. I don't want it all to be pretty and beautiful. This guy is out there in the middle of the winter when it's freezing cold, it could be hammering down with rain. I decided, right, let's just jump down, get onto the boat, get on his level. When he's out in the harbour every day, I wanted to show that shot how he sees the world, what his view is when he takes that little ride out into sea every morning. I love the contrast between somebody sitting down in a restaurant, fine dining, eating this lobster, and then having Malcolm sat out there on his lobster pots fishing in all kinds of weather. So I wanted to take the shot of him sat on there, all the dark, heavy weather in the background, and then to use one of my lenses, which I knew would pick out some real detail, isolate him with a you know, real shallow depth of field if I could. Um, and that, for me, was going to be story told. But whatever it is that's your passion, focus on that and keep practicing because when you get comfortable, that's when you get the best results. <laughs>